Whoa, was that the Leafs? Was that them beating the Rangers? How come we don't look that jacked after taking five days off? Well, that's because food is delicious. It is. Hi, everyone. Oh, <laughs> come on! The Leafs won a thing! Austin Matthews! Matt what's your dream? And well, time for a redo. The team is ruining my life! Welcome back, Leafs win! 4-2 over the New York Rangers! Because the Leafs time is now! We're at the halfway mark, not really, this was game 40, but whatever, they took a week off, this should count as the halfway mark. Couple things that you know, heading into the game, the Leafs were four points back of the Ottawa Senators, who had played just one more game than the Leafs. The Leafs were five points back of the Bruins, who played six more games than the Leafs. The maximum amount of points you can get in six games is 12. Oh my goodness, the Leafs are very all the way in this, which means they gotta turn it on now. They cannot slow down. They cannot lose the momentum they had heading into this break. So, how would they respond after having this break? Oh my goodness, we got a young team. They're just gonna screw it all up. What did you do when you were their age, Steve? Well, I left everything for the last freaking minute! But now I'm much older and I don't do that stuff anymore. No, I'm just better at coping with it. Oh my goodness, and they're facing the New York Rangers. Oh my god, the seventh best team in the league, even though they're only fourth best in the Metro Division. That's so stupid. How are they gonna respond? They've been taking pictures on the beach, dabbing and snorkels and flippers. Austin Matthews has been doing all kinds of crazy jerky dance moves that looked like he was riding a bicycle or something in one and how would they respond? Within the first five minutes, William Nylander sniping John Henrik Lundqvist, that's his ninth of the season, William three times three lander, and it's one nothing Leafs. They scored first and it wasn't Matthews, weird. Extra weird, Henrik Lundqvist played with Nylander's dad. I remember when he was just a little boy. Well he grew into a man with a mean wrister there, Henrik! First period progresses, Rangers give the Leafs a power play, don't do that. Mitch Marner to JVR in front, silky little move, puts it through Henrik Lundqvist, two nothing Leafs at the end of one. Mitch Marner with a big apple on this one, his 23rd assist of the season already, this kid is disgusting! Am I getting too excited? Am I getting too excited? Well, Chris Kreider seems to think so, he scores on Freddie Anderson, and I don't like him for that reason, now it's only 2-1. What an effort though, just casually lying on the ground and scoring the goal, like he's still on bye week. Damn, remember when Chris Kreider was just like some playoff pest and known for crashing the net and that's all he did? 17 goals! He might be good. Now this is a very key moment in the game for the Leafs, because they are where two goal leads go to die. There were three and four goal leads go to die too, but we're only talking about two goal leads in this one. Chris Kreider scores a goal. JVR puts the puck over the glass after that. I hate that penalty when it's against the Leafs, and now the Leafs are on the PK. Here's the lucky thing about the Leafs PK. It's pretty good. On one hand, it sucks that the Leafs take so many penalties. They really need to cut back on that. On the other hand, well, at least their PK is well practiced, and for as much grief as we give them, you know who's on the Leafs PK? Matt Hunwick and Roman Polak. You remember things like Zach Hyman getting a breakaway on the PK, and Leo Komarov breaking out and causing all kinds of havoc, but those guys are standing in front of the net. I've been giving Hunlack a hard time, I just want to be fair. And they're also not the only penalty killers. The Leafs penalty kill collectively kills it off. So now about five minutes after Kreider's goal, in comes Connor Brown. He puts it on net and Austin Matthews is coming in. Are you scared? You should be! Because the puck might deflect off your own defenseman and in. Connor Brown from downtown, he scores his 10th goal of the season. Guys, Connor Brown's a rookie too. The fact that the Leafs have a rookie not named Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, or William Nylander, who's on pace for 20 goals, is astounding. Well, it wasn't even a good goal. It deflected off a guy. I don't give a crap. And speaking of the PK, there's a guy who plays on the PK too. You gotta give it up for Connor Brown. For a guy who I wasn't even sure, I think most people weren't even sure, I, Babcock might not have even been sure that he was gonna make the team out of camp. Connor Brown has been incredible. And by the way, to give you an idea of how things have been going for the Leafs this season, Connor Brown is already the fifth Leaf to hit 10 goals. The Leafs had six 10 plus goal scorers all of last season. Now keep in mind that William Nylander and Tyler Bozak have nine goals each. They get a goal each. There's seven 10 plus goal scores. Third period comes and the Leafs have to stave off an attack at the start. And by stave off an attack, I mean the Rangers are trying to score and the Leafs are not. Which, I know you gotta defend a lead. I'm not sure that's how you do it. We're like halfway through the period. The shots are like nine to two for the Rangers. But later on in the third, Rangers take a penalty, giving the Leafs a power play. Don't do that. Mitch Marner, of course, to Tyler Bozak, who, who just, who just just wraps that in that nice 
nice little wrapping paper that you always throw out in Christmas it seems like a big waste and he puts it in a box and he wraps it with a nice ribbon and he puts a tag on it and then writes a witty card and then hands a beautiful wide open pass to Connor Carrick for the easy banging goal 4-1! You know I used to be afraid when the Leafs were up 4-1 let's be honest I'm still afraid I used to be more afraid that was late enough in the game and I'm feeling pretty good about the Leafs right now especially since they made it 4-1 uh, who's, who's the guy who scored that goal again? Hmm. Anyway, about a minute and a half to go. This is iced, right? The Leafs have a three goal lead. What are the Rangers going to do? Score a goal every 30 seconds as if. This is fine. Oh my god, no! JT Miller snipes. That was a nice goal. His 13th of the season and now it's 4-2. That's, that's probably okay. I mean, all, all they got to do is not allow a goal every 42.5. Oh my god! thinking it too but you shouldn't have been because freddie anderson stops 34 of 36 shots Leafs win! And now they have to play the second half of a back-to-back -back against the Ottawa Senators, which we will be enjoying at Hockey Night and Cinema at Western University in London, Ontario. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. You know what I forgot to talk about on the podcast pretty much entirely? The Jonas Enroth trade. Leave a comment or send me a tweet if this is the first time you're hearing that Jonas Enroth was traded. I'd be surprised if you even knew he was a Leaf. How many starts did he get? Three? Four? He played in six games total. He had to fill in for Freddie during the Vancouver Brawl game. Yeah, yeah, see, you were just reminded that you didn't know that. No one knows that. Does Jonas Enroth exist? So the Leafs trade him to the Anaheim Ducks. Can we just do a quick history of goalies to the Anaheim Ducks? The Leafs dealt Vesa Toscala to the Anaheim Ducks. And Justin Pogge, it's true, look it up. And Jonathan Bernier this past summer. And now Jonas Enroth. If there was a team you basically wanted to harvest goalies from over the last 10 years, it wasn't the Leafs. What are you doing, Ducks? BT Dubs, thanks for Freddy. So the Leafs get a seventh round pick in 20. 18 from the Ducks. And that's all it is, a seventh round pick. Oh, what's the condition? There is none. The Leafs just get a seventh round pick in 2018. Alright, whatever. They get a seventh round pick two years from now. Man, do you understand that the Leafs got a pick? Like an actual honest to goodness, there's no strings attached pick for a goalie they weren't using and didn't want? It's amazing how timing works out. Apparently the Ducks experienced a couple injuries in the American Hockey League and, and they're basically strapped down there. But to my knowledge, maybe I'm wrong, John Gibson and Jonathan Bernier are healthy. They got two healthy NHL goalies. But again, correct me if I'm wrong, one or both of those injuries in the AHL happened after Jonas Gustafsson and Curtis McElhaney, who is a Leaf by the way, were on waivers. You could have had them for nothing and instead you give up something for Jonas Enroth. Now, I don't expect the Leafs to do a whole hell of a lot with that pick. I don't think they're going to Henrik Zetterberg, Pavel Datsuk with that pick, but there's an off chance, like a super off chance, and it's free money. It's like someone handing you a dollar. Yeah, I'd prefer that it would be $10,000, but I'll take your dollar just the same, thank you! So the Leafs magically get rid of a goalie, acquire a pick, and then acquire another goalie for free. That is a fun little week. Winning the draft lottery with Austin Matthews is big. You need to do that sort of thing. You need the big stuff. But the little stuff counts too. Now this doesn't carry nearly as much weight if Curtis McElhaney stinks. Or sorry, <clears throat> Curtis Backup Haney. Wait, okay, do we want Backup Haney or Backup Laney? And if he has a good game, you can say, hey, he's a pretty good Backup Haney. Please clap. Last but not least, I already mentioned Hockey Night in Cinema in London, Ontario. Are you going? I hope you are. Because we get to watch a massive game, an enormous game between the Leafs and Ottawa Senators. Huge playoff implications. How are we talking about this right now? How are we talking playoffs? It's the Leafs! Ah, 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 wrong attitude. We're talking playoffs because it's the Leafs. It's a new time, my friends. It feels funny, but I kind of like it. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Check out the Steve Dangle blog. Holy smokes, I've been posting so much stuff over the last little while. The Leafs had a bye week. I did not. Check it out. Enjoy it. Put it in your brain hole. This is your brain hole right here on your forehead. I'm just going to end the video right now. Thanks for watching.